Uh, it's coincidental that Mario is going to Missoula in a couple days. I met Mario in Missoula a few years ago. Um, we, we both went to the University of Montana. Me and a, I was there during the Carter administration, and I think you were there during the Bush administration. So, uh, But um, I, I went back for a meeting, and uh, everybody said, um, you got to meet this really smart guy. Um, Montana is pretty lily white and, and not a lot of ethnicity there, and they thought he was from North Dakota. But uh, uh, I met him and uh, hired him right away, uh, was very impressed with him. Um, hiring Mario is like dating a Kardashian. It, uh, it just lasts a little while, and, and, and then they go on to somebody better looking. But uh, we, we, we had some good times together, and uh, congratulations here. I've been, you know, He's, uh, he's like me, he's, a, he's an entrepreneur and he gets bored easily and has a short attention span and he kind of moves on to different things. And so I appreciate that about him, but uh, congratulations, you've done a great thing here, Mario. Um, Mario had challenged me with, uh, again, not talking about the business, but how the business was developed, what the idea was. And, and that was uh, an interesting challenge. And I thought, why do I do what I do and how did it happen? Um, I grew up in Montana. I never had any desire to work for a company uh, with, with you know, the exception of a few months at different places. I never really had a boss. Uh, I, I, I went to school in Montana, got out of school, and um, uh, started my first company when I was 21, 22, went in the software business. Uh, did seven, eight years of, of different kinds of startups and ended up in the advertising business, uh, which has been sort of the best thing for me. Uh, met my wife in the advertising business, who has been a, a, a very great stabilizing force to my, my basic personality and balance. And, uh, but uh, things have gone well, and I thought, why did they go well? What, what, what was the idea that kind of made things happen? And, um, and what is it I love about business? And, uh, and what kind of business do I love? And I, and I realized I like businesses that change the currency. I... Uh, in the advertising business, you meet all kinds of entrepreneurs and, and major companies, and, and most of them are sort of chasing the same thing. They want to uh, be able to manufacture paper towels a little bit cheaper than everybody else does to give them a market advantage. Or they come up with a new feature on a vacuum that makes that vacuum a little bit more marketable at the same price as everybody else. Uh, but they don't really change the currency by which people operate. And I find that the best businesses are, are all about changing the currency, and, and that's what I'm going to talk a little bit about today. But initially, it didn't start out that way. Uh, right there? Yeah, closer in? Okay. Um, I started out with my, my first entrepreneurial endeavor in 1980. I was um, going to school in Montana. I was working at uh, the television station there, and my big idea was rip off Ron Popeil. Um, a lot of you are too young. How many, how many here know who Ron Popeil is? Ron Popeil is the greatest television salesman in history. And check this out. It's, it's, I didn't believe it either. He has a Nobel Prize. So yeah, Google him. Uh, anyway, Ron Popeil was a classic television pitch man. And, and um, he had things like the Vegematic and all, all kinds of interesting products and, um, and, and, and very famous for developing these products. I didn't know who he was, and I was working at the ABC affiliate part-time in Missoula, and I kept seeing this, uh, this ad for the Popeil Pocket Fisherman. Uh, and, and I'm a pretty dedicated fisherman. It never occurred to me that I needed a fishing rod that would fit in my glove box, uh, but Ron was convincing people that they should buy this, this fishing pole, and um, uh, just in case, I guess you're driving down the road and you see some place you must fish, uh, anyway, it was running all the time, and I, and I said to the people at the station, I assume Ron was a local guy, because it was such a poorly produced awful ad, and uh, it looked like something we would have produced at the station. And they said, no, that's a national ad, it's a very, very popular ad, and it's a PI. And now some of you are in advertising here, and you may or may not be familiar with that, but a PI ad is a per inquiry ad. Uh, so you don't pay for the media based on a media slot, you pay every time you make a sale. And in those days, you would have to send a check to the television station for $15, and the station would take $5, and, and Ron would keep 
And that was how the uh, initial part of direct response was handled. And that's how, direct res that's how cable networks were built based on that. WTBS and the super stations and all those stations, they would take their excess media time and they'd run Rod's ad and all these different ads. And I was fascinated by the fact that a, a television station would take advertising from a fixed cost to a per sale cost. And so I immediately ran out and found a really crappy fishing product, although it was better than the, than the uh, Hope Hill Pocket Fisherman. And um, I found some footage and I put together a commercial. And uh, you would write into drawer D and send your check. And uh, I did not sell the, uh, the volume of products that Ron did, but I sold thousands of my little fishing box, got it on all over the country, and uh, that enabled me to pay my way through Missoula, pay my way through Stanford, and when I graduated from college, I had money in the bank, which is very difficult to do now. So um, I thought, that was interesting. I, I, uh, uh, thanks to Ron Peel, I found a new currency. After that, like I said, I did some startups, technology companies, that kind of thing. And ultimately, in 1990, I end up back in Portland. And not that I ended to go back into the direct response television business, but um, found a company here that uh, had a client called Solaflex, uh, which maybe some people remember. And uh, um, that begat other kinds of fitness clients. But, um, the, the infomercial business, direct response television business was first starting and I realized these guys really changed the currency. Because as those of you in advertising know, um, advertising is based on eyeballs and everybody was paying according to how many people saw a commercial. Didn't matter if you bought, didn't matter if the commercial was good or bad, you paid according to how many people saw that commercial. And once you got into direct response advertising, it was based on how many people bought. So um, I thought, this is, this is fabulous. This is something I sort of understand. And it's a complete game change. Um, and I also began to realize, and with all due respect to the hallowed halls of advertising, that, that a lot of advertising, both on the advertising side and the client side, is based on complete bullshit. And, um, and if you could change that currency, that became even more important. So, um, I started to work with an agency here in town, Taiyi, and we built it up to be a pretty good-sized agency, and, and uh, everything was going well. And that took me to 1998, um, sold out of that agency, um, together with my wife who worked in the media side, we started a new agency, and we thought, okay, the, 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 we will work on the premise that the currency of, of television advertising should be different. And people were beginning to see that because of the web, um, the, the, the initial currency of the web was based on old advertising metrics. If I click, if I look at it, then um, that must be good and I will pay based on that. And if you remember the first crash of the web, people realized, well, that doesn't make any sense. It should be based on transaction or it should be based on some sort of action. So we thought people are really ready for this. They're, they're ready for, for a currency change. I looked at all the things I didn't like about the traditional advertising business. The first was uh, the big free creative pitch. Those of you that work in advertising or, or, or participate understand that the advertising model is completely broken. If you want to win an account, you go in, you develop a complete plan for them, you can spend tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars going in and telling a client what they should do along with 10 other people and you may or may not win the account, I, it, it was ridiculous to me. I, would you go to a law firm and say, listen, I'd like you to develop a, co a complete plan and contracts and strategy for my estate, and if I like it, if I think you did the best job, I will pay for it when you're done. Didn't make any sense to me. So we structured the agency differently. We don't do big, free, creative pitches. We instead meet with a client, give them a very different approach towards their business and say, uh, we're going to do a feasibility study for you, and you're going to pay for that, and it's going to determine whether or not we should work together. Occasionally, we will go after a certain account where we have to do something for free, but, but most of the time, 80% of the time, um, the client should pay to determine if we're the right fit, or we should share that cost. We shouldn't be doing everything for free. Second issue is that 
uh, from my perspective, advertising changed 15, 20 years ago uh, because a lot of people that wanted to be movie makers or do television series or be artists decided they should go into advertising because they could make a living, and they changed the currency of advertising. It wasn't about selling a product anymore. It was about a really sexy, creative idea that everybody thought was wonderful and, uh, and looked good on your, uh, in your book or on your reel and ultimately might not serve the client particularly well. So we like to do big, sexy, creative ideas, but we put it against a strategy, and our promise to the client is, if you do this and it goes well, you're gonna make this much money. Pretty simple premise. You may or may not win a creative award, but you're gonna make this kind of money. Change their currency. We went back to the, the, the whole idea of advertising valuation, um, the reach and frequency, again back to if they saw it, they will come. And we replaced that, um, and, and, and a lot of our business is about developing highly precise dashboards that measure everything that happens. So uh, we've spent millions of dollars over the last few years figuring out if I see a television commercial and I can buy it retail, I can buy on the web, I can go to Amazon, I can do all these different things, what do people actually do and how much can we test that and, and how do, do different messages impact that and make people take the desired action and how do you measure that and how do you give somebody a real-time dashboard so that they can look at that, not just from the web perspective but from all their marketing initiatives to see exactly how much money they're making. And we get them hooked on the dashboard. Because finally, what you want to have happen is that you want to change your agency from a flavor of the month into a true relationship with the client. And I think this is analogous to so many businesses. I see when we screw up, we lose that relationship. And I see so many businesses that don't value that relationship. So how do you change that relationship from, gee, you gave me that big, sexy, creative idea, you made these promises to me, to I'm connected with you, and I have to stay with you for the, for the long run, and I'm not going to drop you um, like a Kardashian the minute that it's, it's not a big, sexy thing for me anymore. That, when it works well, becomes a big, holistic relationship, uh, and the currency which we trade on is completely different. I think those are the kind of game-changing ways to approach your business that can be translated into all kinds of business. But, um, to play at parity, to just try to, to take a concept or a product or an idea and just make it a little bit better so that you have a slight advantage is, is a completely different approach than really changing the currency by which people buy, interact, and build your business. And with that, I will take questions.